Hello guys, back looking at the John Deere 9560R again today. Uh, hopefully this will be the last installment of this build. What I'm going to do today, basically install the battery, install the power switch, then the Arduino on top of the battery, and on top of that I'll have to put a little board here so that I can plug the uh, NRF24 module in and out so that I can still have access to the um, FTDI pins here or the uh, kind of pins to program the Arduino. I still need access to that. But we're okay, we have quite a lot of height here. So with any luck we won't have any spatial issues. But uh, we are probably going to have quite a hard time wiring all this. Well, I'm going to have quite a hard time wiring all this. So the first thing I need to do is wire the uh, power switch here. And that also means wiring the battery. So I'll have that wired in here. Mount the switch in there, and that'll be the first step done. Well, here's our power switch mounted, and our battery installed there. So, what I'm going to do is mount the Arduino on top of that next. And you can hear that the servos coming active. Now, obviously, there's no Arduino, so they're just moving to a random position. But uh, that's a sign that the switch is working at least. So, next to the Arduino. I want to mount the radio module like this above the Arduino but that means that I'll be blocking the header here that I need to program the Arduino so my plan is to make a little uh, daughter board that will have a socket on it this little socket here that I can plug the NRF24 module into that way I can unplug it when I need to program the Arduino well here's the Arduino with the little daughter board for the NRF24 module so you can see I put the pins up through it, soldered everything in place there and now I can stick the NRF24 module on top of the Arduino like that then when we come to our John Deere we can mount our Arduino and radio module in there something like that so should close down no problem and hopefully this plastic will allow the RF signal to uh, propagate now the tricky bit is wiring that all up. Okay, well about an hour, maybe an hour and a half later, I have all the wires wired up there. So you can see we have our uh, switch and our battery below our Arduino, the door board then, and finally our radio module. That all just squeezes in there, and you'll note all the space that I had there for soldering, which was much much better than the Massey. The Massey was very tight very hard to get all the soldering in there. Uh, I put a little bit of tape over the battery just in case uh, the Arduino, the solder joints on the Arduino might rub on the uh, top of the battery and damage it. I just put a bit of tape in there, hopefully uh, that won't uh, wear out. Our bonnet just sits down like that and with any luck our radio module will be able to transmit at the front here. Hopefully it's not too tight to the top. It does appear to be pretty close to the LEDs on the top but uh, all we can really do is set it up and test it out. Hopefully we'll get a good signal. But if we don't, I guess we'll have to move the radio module somewhere else, which would be a bit of a pain. But um, if that's what we have to do, I guess that's what we have to do. So what I'm going to have to do now is sort out the code, because obviously I don't have any code for a tractor with a single uh, Arduino in it. So I'm going to have to sort the code out, and uh, that could take a few hours. So... Uh, it'll only be a couple of seconds for you but it'll probably be tomorrow morning before I get uh, filming this again ok well here's the John Deere finished uh, the programming didn't actually take that long in the end probably 45 minutes about an hour something like that I had to combine the code for the Massey cab and the Massey uh, body code all into one to, for this to work and that went alright so we have code now to can work an RC tractor using only one Arduino so I'll just demonstrate it now we have our Steering. I should show you the controller too. So, we have our steering. It's probably a little bit sensitive still. That's alright. We have our drive. It's not the fastest tractor I have, but for a tractor this big, that's probably fast enough, especially with this kind of steering. It's a little bit hard to get used to that kind of steering. If you if you watch the lifting arm servo here, you'll see that it moves around a little bit 
so that's not the best design I'll have to do something with that as well as that the arms the little catch here that used to hold the arms up and down that's catching uh, the mechanism now so I need to remove that I think that's pretty much the only problem that I have with the model really uh, we have control of our accessory no problem uh, we have our indicators work front and back we have our individual indicators you can see that's our right indicator and our left indicator it's working fine then we have our headlights here and that's the full beams so that's dips full beams turn them off uh, I don't know if you remember I added the green LEDs into the bonnet here, they look pretty good. Then we have our kind of work lights. Now the work lights ended up being a different colour than the uh, white LEDs. I presume I just installed the ones that I had at the time. But it's alright, it looks pretty good at night anyway. Um, we also have the brake lights, you can just about see them there. Well, not brake lights, really tail lights. So they're on the back there, they're working fine too. So that's the John Deere 9560R build finished I guess, uh, it took a long time to get here but I think the final result is a pretty good tractor. Well, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I wired the uh, beacon LED backwards and I had no patience to dismantle the tractor to fix that so I just snipped the wire and I'm going to forget about that. I don't think it added enough to the model to warrant the hassle of trying to rerun the wires. So that's the John Deere finished. And if you like that build, uh, don't forget to hit the share button or, or hit the like button. That all helps to grow the channel. And I guess this is the third tractor that I've properly finished. And uh, I suppose it's probably like two years since I bought this and started it. But uh, finally there, we're starting to get a couple of machines up and running now. With any luck, we'll get those two Siku tractors converted pretty quickly. And I'm hoping to get the loader and the uh, PC400 excavator done before Christmas. That would be pretty pretty ideal and that's kind of the plan going forward so I hope you enjoyed this build and uh, you'll stay tuned for some of the other things that we'll have in the future and uh, that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching